And she said, we don't believe we have anything to apologise for. Did they find anything wrong with AJ? They couldn't. They weren't medically comp capable. And Suzanne is still feeling the strain. <laughs> Can we go to the bedroom? <laughs> this has been getting worse the last two days. To me, he's okay, he's thin, but then I look at his dad, I look at his mum. I wouldn't expect an extremely fat baby with parents who are that thin. Lawyer Marina Von Cena has seen stories like this from both sides. She represents people with complaints against docs and has also worked for Docs itself in the past. Is this the worst Docs bungle you've ever seen? It would rate as one of the worst. And it's not an isolated incident. Uh, my biggest concern is the way the department has used its position to basically abuse the rights of parents in being informed and given an opportunity to find out what's really going on before they take action. Bill Troll? Yes. Can we have an address as to where he's going? She's, she's, got, got, yep, all she's got the papers. See, we've got to protect kids. The public actually demands that we protect kids. If a child dies, who tends to get the thing? Docs. We cop it. So the public can't have it both ways. Carmel Nyland is the Director General of the Department of Community Services. She believes the department is damned if it does act and damned if it doesn't. They reported to me that the child appeared to be underweight and that they were concerned for that child's welfare. But remember, the district officers have other information, which I have too, which I can't disclose from the public. I am legally prevented from disclosing that information. Open Sergeant. the door or I will break the door Sergeant. down. Understand? Sergeant. But the Director General refuses to comment about the heavy-handed tactics used to enter the Todd's house. I'd like to read the order. If they had received cooperation, they would have been allowed into the house, they would have been allowed to view the baby, and they would have discussed with the, par the parents the birth weight of the child and the, and the uh, feeding schedules. And if this was satisfactory, so they would have gone. Are you happy with the way your district officers handled this case? I'm satisfied with the way that they've handled it. In fact, I compliment them because they had a very difficult job to do and based on judgment, they, they made a quick call. You're hindering me? I'm not hindering, you have not shown me any order. You're hindering me? You haven't shown me the order. The police were acting on the department's instructions. Now maybe looking at the police on their own, they're overreacted, but I think the department had a role to clearly advise the police no, we haven't served a no notice under Section 60. No, we haven't served a notice under Section 23 for a medical assessment. Baby AJ has now had his independent medical assessment. Doctors found he is underweight, but concede he is a premature baby and his parents are also skinny. Doctors have also found there is no evidence AJ has been maltreated, with the family now being offered a new feeding program to keep AJ's weight up. One part of the complaint was that he had a bite mark on his head. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know how you bite a kid on the head on the top of his skull. I'm sure it, someone might be able to, but uh, I can't see how you do it. Uh, and I can't see how anyone could justify making that kind of claim. Was there evidence of abuse? Uh, there was evidence that the uh, family um, maybe not be caring for the child appropriately. I love the Todds are now planning legal action yeah, against right. the Department yeah, of Community yeah, Services. Yeah, it's something that's happened. It's something that's going to happen again and again and again and again to other people. I, I guess, guess what, we, what we want now? We want our dignity and our respect back because I know Suzanne has lost all dignity in this. Nothing will ever replace that. And police wouldn't comment on camera about their role in the raid, but did say they were only following orders and they have replaced the door. Coming up next, Michael Beatty and the Broncos' greatest moment. The Broncos uh, fan club there today and uh, just to see how, many, how much support we had there today was just fantastic. Hopefully next year, you know, we can uh, stay down here maybe for a night. 
just married his childhood sweetheart. A silver master crossed over the median strip. But a cowardly act would destroy their lives. What do you say to a three-year-old whose dad was their life? Australia's Most Wanted, tonight. I am standing for the position of your next Prime Minister, but I stand for much more than that. My Australia will give dignity and security to the elderly. We got out there and we listened. We listened and we learned. Battling Australians don't want a GST, they want a J-O-B. My Labor government will set itself a target of reducing unemployment to 5% in our first... We have a plan for our nation, not just a plan for a tax. If a tax looks like it is going to hurt, that is because it will. Put Labor back to work because Australia deserves better. Authorised by Kim Beasley for the ALP Canberra. Hmm, home style. Look at that. Lamb, veggies and pasta. Oh, mate, I think you did better than me. Yes, sis. Just take the pan juice. Yes, sis. With Continental Cup of Sauce, you can create a great meal in seconds. Brilliant. Just like your sisters. You and Continental. Just brilliant. He'll never get rid of that, mate. I know, but we just can't shift it. We truly can't, but there's nothing we can do. If you're not sure about John Howard's GST, just remember that once it's put in place, you'll be stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it. Authorised by Barry Jones for the ALP Canberra. Broncos headquarters Red Hill, a little less crowded tonight, but in the 24 hours to this hour, 7,500 people were drawn like magnets to the club. And is it any wonder? What a day, what a year for the pride and joy of Queensland sport. The Brisbane Broncos are still out celebrating tonight, and who would begrudge them? It was a colossal weekend for the Broncos and Queensland, a weekend many won't forget. In particular, one group of loyal supporters who took on the best Sydney had to offer. Well, sort of. Here's Michael B. We've been here uh, once before. We came down here last year. Came down last year, similar sort of trip. 8 p.m. Saturday, and the boys from Carina Leagues Club are in Sydney and they're ready to party. Put your fist up in the air and say, <laughs> go, let's go, Broncos. Right, go! What do you reckon, brother? We've got a lot of money, Biggie. Broncos? Yeah, song about the Broncos, I'll give you 15 cents. All right. Of course, along the way, they're hoping to spread a bit of the Queensland spirit. And the King's Cross locals are hoping they'll drink a bit of New South Wales spirit and drop more money from Alfie Langer after a bad Melbourne Cup. You want penetration shows? No, 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 no. penetration show. Come on, buddy. Come on, you want penetration show? Live day. Live so she gets on stage. Still, she go. gets on stage and she does a blow. Give us the tickets, give us the tickets. What? Get a Suzuki or something. I got go one. to the Broncos. And in the window looking on was another refugee from Easy Rider who looked as though he dropped more acid than my swimming pool after heavy rain. Grand final tomorrow. Broncos! 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 Oh. Hmm, Dirty Harry meets uh, Woody Allen. <laughs> have got one player you look out for, they have their fitness to look out for, the whole team. You definitely wouldn't want to go out to Canterbury uh, yelling Broncos, would you? I reckon we get tomorrow night, tomorrow night when the Broncos The next morning, outside the Sydney football ground, there was no sign of the boys, they could have still been in the pink pussycat. But no matter, there were some Broncos supporters and they were vocal. Most of these occupants were the Broncos Sydney supporters, and yes, there are some. Are you from, uh, from Brisbane originally? Yeah, born and bred in Sydney. Born and bred in Sydney? Well, what on earth made you become a Broncos supporter? Well, Molly Lewis was my mentor, and uh, then when we went out... <laughs> Go the dogs! Go the dogs! 
Just looking at these guys made me feel unfit, and some of the Technicolours here could match the upcoming yawn from the Carina boys. The rivalry obviously starts at a tender age, but once you get older, you have to decide whether you're auditioning for Phantom of the Opera or Scream 3. This guy was obviously just on the wrong set. You're not exactly sort of flavour of the month around here. Well, we know that, mate. We're in enemy territory. We expect that. <laughs> as long as they don't see the whites of our eyes, we'll be right. <laughs> and as for score predictions, the Bronco supporters were confident, especially Alan Border. I think by 20 plus points, believe it or not. I know it's supposed to be a tight game, grand final day, anything. And uh, what can we've done uh, the last couple of weeks has been sensational. It's been but pretty I, good, hasn't it? Eight I games, not tried. Yeah, I think the fear is how might have uh, come to a sudden halt, though. I didn't have tickets, so when someone suggested I catch the game on the big screen at the town hall, I thought they were talking about a pub. No such luck, but the view was great, and the locals and tourists friendly if misguided. Well, I'm, I've been working here for a few months with Ernst & Young, and most of my colleagues favour Canterbury, so I think I should favour them as well. Is, is everyone here for the dogs? Yeah. He's an outcast. <laughs> He's a leper in our society. The bulldogs are going all right, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, here we go now. But alas for the Blue and White Army, they didn't. And at Sydney Airport, Broncos supporters from Brisbane and Sydney were making more noise than the 747s. And man of the match, Gordon Tallis, was trying to remember the match. I've got to watch the game on tape, because I, you know I, mean? because, um, I don't remember too much of it, but I watch we get home and I watch it on tape the next week when I sober up, and it, it'll be all right. It'll probably sink in then. You'd probably be like, you'd like to be on the plane going back to Brisbane instead I of sure staying in would. Sydney, wouldn't you? I sure would. Oh, well. Then line, next time. Maybe. Maybe they'll celebrate in Sydney once in their life. Well... Maybe next year. Did you find Canterbury? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I found the casino. Oh, did you? <laughs> well, were you aware that you had such a strong supporters group down in Sydney? We were just speaking to Peter here, and uh, she runs the Bronco supporters group uh, down Very here. strong. We've met them, and uh, they go to every match when we come to Sydney, and it's just great to see the, uh, the Broncos uh, fan club there today, and uh, just to see how, many, how much support we had there today was just fantastic. And I've got to tell you, she's very upset that you're not partying down here tonight instead of going back to Brisbane. Yeah, well, they're all upset, but uh, hopefully next year, you know, we can uh, stay down here maybe for a night. Well done, guys. Have a good party. Oh, yes, and if you bump into the boys from Karina, can you let us know? Well, we hope they made it back in one piece, but on last reports, they're still missing in action. Nevertheless, it was a great Broncos victory and our congratulations to everyone involved. Joey, you up? Next. Did someone just break my smash the yeah, okay. Mystery break-ins on Seven's Home and Away. Never forget the facts. Labor left Australia a government deficit of over $10 billion. Under John Howard, the budget is in surplus by $2.5 billion. Under Labor, you paid mortgage rates as high as 17%. Under John Howard, we have the lowest interest rates in 28 years. Under Labor, welfare rorts were costing Australians a fortune. Under John Howard, crackdowns are saving the Australian taxpayer $46 million a week. The Howard government introduced work for the dole. Labor wants to scrap it. Don't let Labor sneak in on your preference vote. Authorised by Old Crosby for the Liberal Party, Canberra. Let's go overflow! At overflow, time is running out to buy one of these sensational watches at just $10!
virtually unbreakable glass cutting boards, five dollars. Latest look, don't pop lucky John wheels from twenty-four dollars. This huge plastic picnic basket, a crazy five ninety-five. Handy four drawer desk, tidy seven ninety-five. Big three drawer storage units, thirty-four ninety-five. Don't miss ceramic rice bowls at two dollars. Chuck your old desky, eighteen litre coolers, only twenty-four ninety-five. Scatter cushions in stunning colours and patterns, five ninety-five. Huge terracotta salt glazed urns from nine ninety-five. These sturdy aluminium breakfast chairs, just thirty-four ninety-five. Comfy body hugging V-shaped pillows, nine ninety-five. Ruffle pillowcases to fit, just three ninety-five. Set of three executive pens, two dollars. Pack of six nine hundred mil garden stakes, two dollars. Christmas flannel back tablecloths, only three ninety-five. Secure your future with this week's Doorbuster. The Mark Philippus's tennis trainer will teach your kids to play like pros at an unbelievable twenty-nine ninety-five. Let's go overflow. But only from an overflow store near you. I'll be back about four. Okay. Hi. Everything okay? No problem. Solve a maxi wash. Problem solved. Job security. Cheaper fuel. Health is a pile. Who will stand up for you? We're listening. If we keep the economy growing, there'll be jobs and security for families. It's a deal. We'll stand up for you. Vote Nationals. Authorised by Ray Braithwaite, National Party, Canberra. David James Elliott, the new series of JAG, Wednesday, 7.30. Our time's just about up, but before we go, a look ahead to tomorrow night's report on the new natural treatment for asthma, the world first trials. Even if it shows only a minor improvement, well then a minor improvement's better than none. It will improve my quality of life, no doubt about that. Some people have said that this is very effective in both preventing and curing their asthma. And also tomorrow night, a school holiday special has two mums and six children road test Dreamworld, SeaWorld and Movie World. The best and the cheapest. Their verdicts tomorrow night. Until then, good night. Trees, they give us shade, oxygen and a beautiful vista. Across Brisbane, there are more than 1,600 parks with many different types of trees for us all to enjoy. Tuesday, October 13th, Brisbane City Council invites you to celebrate Arbor Day in Anzac Square, a chance to learn more about trees and how they make such a great contribution to our daily lives. Discover more 5.30 Sundays and on 4KQ. Proudly brought to you by 7 Nightly News. Decided where we're going to eat tonight? Yes. And? <laughs> I thought about your house. You can show me some of those cooking skills you were telling me about last night. Oh, uh, yeah, well, that'd be fine. Then it's settled. 7.30? 8. 8 it is, then. I'll see you tonight. Hi, Juz. Babe. Love of my life. Look, I'm really sorry, but something's come up with work. You know how it is. Got to see a man about a coffin. Good luck with the tat. I'll make it up to you. I promise. V. That is so